how to use stones and crystals to help you accelerate your self-development process as you work towards becoming that better version of yourself, as you work towards becoming a better person, as you work towards living to your fullest potential. That's what this video is all about. My name is Edgar Ortega, Handsome Blind Guy, and as part of this video, I'm going to tell you a story about how one crystal helped pull me from the edges of despair in a very challenging time in my life, but how that also birthed something very positive, something I call associative crystal therapy, a way that you can develop certain traits, certain qualities, certain virtues, and integrate them into your own personality as you work towards becoming a better person. But first, be sure to subscribe to this channel, hit that subscribe button, and uh, hit the notification bell so you get updates whenever I upload a brand new video. Give this video a thumbs up and leave any questions or comments in the comments section. Tell me in the comments, have you ever worked with crystals? And if so, in what capacity? Let me know in the comments section. Now, for thousands of years, people have associated crystals, rocks, stones with certain properties, some metaphysical, some magical. And of course, cultures have used various stones and rocks for various uh, utilitarian purposes, right? For example, the ancient Egyptians were quite fond of a crystal called lapis, and I have a piece of it right here. Um, it's a beautiful blue, um, can range in color, but it's usually this pretty blue to dark blue color um, with various other features, often including other types of crystals within it. And some of the best stuff comes from Afghanistan, but it's found in other places of the world. But the ancient Egyptians were quite fond of this crystal, beautiful blue color. You may have seen depictions of ancient Egyptians um, having, uh, like the women, they'll have blue kind of eyeshadow, blue purple eyeshadow, right? And that was you that was created by using lapis. Also, they carved several um, figures and uh, jewelry that they used from it. In fact, the um, iconic mask of the burial mask of Tutankhamun, you know, that gold and blue mask contains um, lapis in it. Those blue parts are lapis. You guys are familiar with that. Any, as far as today goes in metaphysical circles, people associate this with certain throat energies that they use to help them develop the ability to communicate um, how they're feeling about things, to communicate um, honestly and openly about what it is they feel about things. And you can use associative crystal therapy in this same way. To, if you have trouble communicating, say with your partner or with the public, or if you fear um, what other people might think of you for what you say or what you believe, right? Um, you can use lapis as a way to help you develop that ability. Now, the great thing about associative crystal therapy, which I'm going to tell you about today, is that you don't have to believe that stones or crystals have any sort of magical powers, right? Or, and, and you don't have to believe in crystal energies or anything like that. This modality has been used for thousands of years to help people develop certain traits in this way. But associative crystal therapy opens it up to more people. The only thing you need to do to benefit from associative crystal therapy is to be willing to become a better person, to develop um, skills and traits and integrate certain um, virtues and uh, um, traits into your personality, as I said before. So that's something important to note. But lapis is very beautiful, a very beautiful crystal comes in various shades of blue, but the nicest stuff, like I said, comes from Afghanistan. I'm just sharing a few crystals with you to kind of give you an idea of the history of them. Another beautiful crystal that people often use, um, both in a precious and common form, is opal. And I have a one of my favorite um, common green opals right here. Now, for thousands of years, this has been used by humans in different cultures and has been associated both with bad luck but also with good luck. Now, it was associated with bad luck neg negatively um, for a long time. For example, in France, there was a time when um, people believed that opals were able to imbue the possessor, the possessor of the stone with the magical um, power of invisibility. Now, why would that be a negative thing? Well, it's because um, they are often used by thieves, right? As you can imagine, a thief, if you were a thief, if you're somebody who steals, um, being invisible would be quite handy. So they would carry pieces of opal. Now, um, 
Perhaps they didn't believe that it actually made them invisible, but perhaps it contributed somehow to kind of making people not notice them, right? To making them less conspicuous, right? But also at the same time, perhaps it helped the person to behave in a less conspicuous way so they weren't seen. So in that way, perhaps it did make them become more invisible. Luckily, the reputation of opals have been rehabilitated. This is a common green opal. Um, and one of its traits is that when it dehydrates, it, uh, it gets cracked a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see there's a little crack right there, but it's still a very beautiful piece that I really enjoy. Um, today in metaphysical circles, people that use crystals um, for this kind of thing and in associative crystal therapy, you can use opal. Um, this is associated, this color green, these opals are associated with the heart energies, um, associated with kind of the human heart energies. So love, being kind, things like that. If you have that special someone that you want to start a relationship with, or if you want to start a relationship with someone or strengthen a relationship with somebody, you might give them a piece of green opal to get that going, right? That's kind of associated with those kind of things. It's a really pretty stone. Um, there's a precious version. People make them into jewelry and um, people have been enjoying them for a long time in that way. Another crystal that people really like is um, this one here. This is a piece of pyrite. It's a cubic form of pyrite. It actually grows in this cubic form like this. As you can see, this big cube here, and there's another little one there and one there springing from it. Found all over the world, often called fool's gold, right? But as far as in metaphysical circles go, this is often associated with cheer, with joy, with uh, good luck, uh, getting rid of negativity as well as with the solar plexus area, those kind of energies. Um, but it's also associated with being able to manifest good things like wealth and money. It also helps with self-confidence. Now, um, while these things have been associated with this stone, like I said, you don't have to believe that it possesses any sort of magical ability to imbue the, you or whoever's using them with these certain traits, but you can use them as focus points to help you develop these traits within yourself. So if you need self-confidence, right, you may want to work through associative crystal therapy with a piece of beautiful pyrite, and I'll tell you more about that in just a bit. But that's just another crystal that has been used by humans and uh, um, by for, for a long time. I really like history. I really like learning about different cultures, and I really like nature. So naturally, I like the interaction of humans with nature, and the crystals is no difference in how uh, different people, different cultures have uh, seen stones, as well as animals. I like animals, and I like studying how people see different um, things in nature and what they think of them as well. Um, let's see what else I got here. Ah, yes. It's a beautiful piece of amethyst. This is often people's favorite type of crystal. It's a type of quartz with iron in it that's been irradiated in a way that gives it that very deep purple color. Amethysts come from lots of places around the world, including the United States, and um, it's long associated ancient Greek cultures is tied in with the god of wine, Dionysus. And over time, people would use amethyst. They might plop them in their goblets of wine to help temper the effects of alcohol. So sometimes people didn't want to get too drunk, right? But they wanted to be seen drinking, right, socially. And so they'd plop these in there, their wine drink, and they would um, drink it, hoping it would temper the effects of alcohol. Does that work? Probably not, but over time, um, cultures have associated um, amethyst with that sort of thing. And it's evolved in the way that it's been seen. Um, some of the properties as seen today, we've been helping people to deal with addiction, right? Help them with willpower. Amethyst is also associated with tranquility and peace and is therefore used by many people to help them sleep better. And so we'll talk more about willpower in just a bit, but beautiful amethyst, um, many people's favorite crystal. Now, another crystal that many people use that's really common, um, but that's also quite beautiful is this right here. This is a beautiful piece of smoky quartz. It is a quartz that has been naturally irradiated um, in the earth, and it gives it kind of that darker smoky 
look to it. And this one's been polished up to make it look more nice. I often wear a piece of smoky quartz around my neck. It's kind of a natural piece right there, but this is smoky quartz. This is often associated with grounding. Right, with the grounding energies of the earth as well as grounding um, within the self, right? Now, what do I mean by that? Oftentimes, people are bothered by anxiety, right? Worry about the future or depression about the past, whatever it may be. And or their minds are just simply never in the moment. They're always thinking about something. They might be at home with their families, but they're thinking about work, right? You're not grounded because your mind is off somewhere else. People use smoky quartz and other grounding type crystals to help them with that, to help be in the moment, to help them be present in the here and now, to help them enjoy everything that's going on around them. How often do you sit and focus on negative things, right? And it makes you not feel so great, right? And because you're not, and then you're not able to enjoy all the positive things that go on around you. Working with a piece of smoky quartz or other grounding crystals can help you in your ability to be more grounded, to be more present in the moment. Those are some of the crystals that people use, and there's thousands of them. There's thousands of crystals that have been used throughout history and throughout um, the history of many different cultures around the world, and they've been associated with different things. And some of those properties have changed over those times. Those associations have changed over time. But they are an interesting modality that has set, that has been established for thousands of years, that is already in place, that we can use to help us develop certain traits within ourselves. And I'll tell you how I do that through associative crystal therapy right now. Now, what do I mean by associative? Now, if I were to say certain words like mashed potatoes, uh, stuffing, turkey dinner, and family, what do you think of? You might think of Thanksgiving dinner, right? You might think of Thanksgiving because all of those things in American culture are kind of associated universally with Thanksgiving. Now, what if I were to say, snow, winter, candy canes, twinkling lights, decorating trees, presents. If I were to say all those things, you might think of Christmas because in the subjective experience of us here in the United States and other places around the world, um, that's what we associate with Christmas. Now, you may not think of Christmas in other parts of the world happening in the summer, but it's true. Other parts of the world, they associate Christmas with the summer. We like the snow and all that stuff. And we think of the North Pole, right, where Santa lives. <laughs> but in other places, they don't think of that. They think of more in the summer. And so their memories of Christmas are held in the summer in other parts of the world. Now, when we talk about associations, if I were to say chocolate in your shoe, what would you associate that with? Probably nothing, right? Because you don't have that subjective experience. Now, my stepdad, I grew up with, um, I, that I grew up with, he grew up in the Azores. And when he was a kid, him and his sis, he and his sister would wake up on Christmas morning and there'd be chocolates in their shoes. And that's kind of a Christmas morning for them. That was their experience of Christmas. And so if I said chocolate in your shoes to somebody with that subjective experience, they would associate those things with Christmas because they have a different experience, right? Those feelings, those emotions that rise up, they associate those things with Christmas chocolate in your shoes, much like in the same way that we associate presents and trees in winter here in the United States with Christmas. Now, we've all been in the car or somewhere where we hear that song come on the radio and we begin to get uh, memories, a flood of memories and emotions because the song is old, it's from that decade, right? Back when we experienced that thing or when we were younger, right? When we had that car, when we had that hair, right? When we had that uh, boyfriend or girlfriend or, or girlfriends, whatever it may be, according to your subjective experience, you might hear a song that reminds you of a special person because you've associated, you've anchored certain emotions to that song, certain memories, right? We've associated certain things with those songs. They bring up memories, they bring up uh, emotions, and uh, they even make us smile because of the things they make us think about, or frown or cry, according to what we associate with that song. Also, you might associate smells that bring up strong memories, right? For example, you may be walking in the mall one day and you catch somebody's um, 
um, aftershave or their uh, cologne, right? And it might remind you of that cologne, that aftershave that you um, would smell around your grandfather or your dad when you were a lot younger, right? And it might bring up memories of your dad just simply by smelling um, that guy's cologne that walked by in the mall that day. You All those feelings, all those emotions that came up, those are very strong, very strong associations that you have with that smell. Now, in that same way, we can use crystals to help us one develop certain traits both in uh through visualization through uh guided meditation I, I can help guide you through relaxation making you feel comfortable and putting you in an overall good mood and you can um, begin to associate crystals with whatever trait you want to develop within yourself, right? So in the process, we might go through a guided meditation, it might make you feel good, go through a gratitude exercise so that you're in a pleasant mood. Now, let's say you want to develop something um, like willpower. And we talked about uh, willpower being associated with, uh, it's associated with several crystals, but uh, for example, I'll use the amethyst in this case. Let's say you want to quit um, eating or uh, snacking. Uh, at a certain time of the day, right, we get up in the middle of the night and we stuff ourselves. Let's say you want to start developing more willpower so that you don't do that, right? So we might take you through a guided meditation, make you feel relaxed, go through a gratitude exercise so that you feel pleasant. And then we'll go through some visualization where you're presented with that temptation, right? And you really think about it. You really try to feel what it feels like when you're tempted and, uh, and maybe even find the reasons that you do that. But um, we go through that process of visualization and we go through the process of visualizing ourselves having the willpower to say no to that food, right? To that snacking time and to eating that stuff we know we're not supposed to eat and we develop those things. And we do this um, all while working with the crystal. And the more we pair ourselves with this um, crystal that we're working with, the more we begin to associate the crystal with these traits we want to develop within ourselves, the stronger that association is going to be. And what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself in one of those times when you're tempted to get up in the middle of the night and go for that midnight snack or whatever it is, right? And you're going to stuff your face um, and eat that food, right? But you're going to be tempted. But there's going to be a time when you can um, get your crystal and begin to associate all these feelings of strength, these feelings that you have the willpower to do that. And uh, that will help guide you in your process as you become a little bit stronger, as you help develop more of your willpower. That's kind of how the process works. Now, of course, I want everybody, if you're watching this video, of course, you're somebody that wants to help develop these traits, develop certain things. Now, it might be something different in you. It might be you want to be a nicer, kinder person, right? It doesn't matter what the trait is. There's a crystal for that, and you can use it for that. Now, it's something that you can use to help develop yourself and make yourself a better person. Now, many of you want to go out into the world and be useful and to help people, but the truth is that if you are a mess, you are not going to be able to help anybody until you help yourself until you get your own room in order right to get yourself in order then and only then can you think to go out and to help those around you your friends and your family your community and ultimately so that you can be of use to the world that should be our ultimate goal right in any self-development process as you build skills whatever it is you want to do first you got to work on yourself and associated with crystal therapy uh, can help you do that in developing these traits. Now, it's helped me in a very special way. I promised a story and I'm going to tell you. Many of you know that I am legally blind. Uh, I became legally blind quite a while ago and my vision has gotten worse since then. Now, I lived, I have an eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa and I lived with this um, disease that's remained pretty stable for most of my life. And in fact, I lived a normal life. I had a job. Uh, I did all these things. Um, just like a normal person would. I got married, I had kids. Um, but when I turned 38, my vision started to deteriorate really rapidly, right? I, could, I wasn't legally blind my whole life. It was only after I turned 38 that my vision um, depleted 
degenerated rapidly due to my eye disease, and that was incredibly difficult, right? You can imagine what it would be like and how it would change your life if you were to lose one of your senses. How would your life be different if you lost your hearing? How would your life be different if you lost a limb or if you lost, like me, your vision after having basically half a life of having vision, right? It can be quite traumatic. There's lots of um, things you got to deal with personally, right? A lot of people, they're not able to handle it, right? And they go to very dark places in their minds. And for me, it was really difficult, right? There's a lot of fear. Right? There's a lot of denial, there's a lot of anger, and there's nothing I could have done about it. It's one of those situations, there's nothing I could do about it. So I have to change how I think about it. But there I was going through difficult times, I was going to really low vibrational states, I've been in really low moods, right? Bordering on depression, right? And it was really difficult for me. Now, as I said, I like things of nature, and my wife and I, one day we were at our um, rock and gem show, and we bought some rocks and gems, and sometimes it's cool just to have, you see something, oh, that's really cool, I want it. But every now and then, those of you who go crystal shopping, <laughs> you guys know that every now and then, you find a certain crystal, a certain gem that seems to call to you. It's something special about it, right? And in this case, uh, I think my wife found and said, hey, cool, look at this. It was a piece of yellow calcite. And uh, I picked it up and I looked at it. And at the time I could still see some color. I could tell it was this pretty yellow lemon color. I shined my flashlight from my phone on it and it lit up and it's just really pleasant. I like the way it felt and there's just something about it. And it didn't cost very much. It was just a few bucks. So I purchased it and I took it home. I put it on my nightstand, right? And I kind of forgot about it. But there were times when I would go through these um, times when I felt really sad because my vision was getting worse, right? Bordering on depression, I'd get really sad, especially at night, right? When we're left alone with our thoughts and it was really difficult. Um, and when my vision would go, I would go through these moments when I, every time it would get worse and I would acclimate to the vision that I had and I would say, okay, I can live like this and that's not so bad. But every time I acclimated, my vision got worse. It went down a notch, right? And then I'd get sad all over again. I'd get kind of depressed and it'd be really hard. And each time it'd get harder and harder and harder because every time I acclimate, I said, I can do this. My vision would get worse and worse. And so you can imagine the world closing in around me. Um, it was quite scary. And then one of these times I was in this mood and uh, I looked over and I saw that piece of yellow calcite and I picked it up from uh, from my nightstand. I began looking at it and uh, it's just soft. It was very pleasant. It made me feel kind of a little bit, I don't know why, but I was looking at it. I was like, I'm going to focus on this thing instead of how I'm feeling right now. And uh, it kind of took my mind off of that kind of de those depressing thoughts that I was having. And I'd look at it and it's like, oh, this is really pretty. I could still see the color a little bit and it felt good in my hand. And I thought, well, this is kind of cool. I'm kind of taking my mind off of it. So I'll kind of focus on it some more. And I didn't think to look, but later on, I looked up some of the uh, metaphysical properties of yellow calcite. And surprisingly, one of the things that uh, jumped out at me was that it helps you with hope, right? And so I'm like, hey, that's kind of cool. That was kind of appropriate for me because I was feeling really down, you know, and I, I had that crystal. It kind of made me feel good just holding it, how the way it felt. And I could still see some of the color at the time. Can't be sad holding that piece of calcite, right? <laughs> That's what I would say. And then I thought how powerful that was and how interesting it was that it kind of brought me out, not even knowing the man, uh, metaphysical properties of the crystal at the time, uh, at least the associated crystals, uh, associated properties, um, as some people might say. And it brought me out of that sadness, out of that depression. Now, a lot of times it would bring me out completely, but I had to focus on it, had to work at it, I had to practice. And the more I practiced with it, the easier it became. Now, sometimes it just kind of took the edge off and it helped me be able to function. But over time, I'd use the crystal and then I soon found myself not needing to use it. I simply went to those places in my mind and with that focused energy, that helped me bring me out of that kind of sad state, that sad depression. Uh, and that's what it can do for you. Whether you are suffering from depression or anxiety, a lot of people are dealing with anxiety, right? We talked about that smoky quartz, right? 
if you're feel, dealing with anxiety or depression or anything like that, you're not grounded. You're not in the moment. You're not enjoying the things around you at the time. And so you can work with a, a crystal that can help you with that. Now, as I said before, you don't have to believe in the magical energies and the energetic properties of the crystal in order for them to work. You simply have to use them, understand their associated properties, and work with them. And you can work with them through guided meditation to help you pair and strengthen this connection that you have with the associations you want to develop within yourself. Whether you use a piece of amethyst to help you develop um, or conquer your addiction, right, to give you willpower at the time, or to simply give you tranquility so that you can sleep, or if you deal with anxiety, depression, right, you might deal with a grounding stone, or if you want to focus your energy, your creative energies, you might work with something like a carnelian, right, works with those really um, base energies that help you deal with your creative passions, um, things like that, right? There's there's crystals for just about every trait that you want to imbue, that you want to integrate into your personality, and you can work with them. And I strongly encourage you to try. If you tried other things, of course, there's no replacing um, professional help, seeking help from a licensed professional, mental health professional, but you cannot do yourself any harm by using crystals, by beginning to use associative crystal therapy to help you develop traits that you want to develop within yourself, to help you overcome certain issues, like we talked about anxiety, depression, things like that, you can use this modality to help you with that. And it's very powerful, and I know because it's worked for me. Now, if you're somebody that um, relies on medication, uh, if you're somebody that relies on uh, things like that to help you feel better, uh, maybe you went to the doctor and the first thing they did was just give you medication, right? I don't like that kind of psychiatric healthcare, right? You go and you seek help, and there's so much that can be done simply if they teach you how to properly direct your thoughts, right? Cognitive therapy is amazing. It's wonderful, and it works really well. It helps people with anxiety, helps people deal with past trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, and a number of other things. But it's used uh, as a way for yourself to change your thoughts, to change how you think, right? And so in this way, it works very similarly. Now you can use um, crystals to help you develop certain traits and things you want to develop within yourself, but it's important that you try. If you're currently relying on medication, use these as a supplement, right? Use this thought, these thought um, practices, these thought exercises, this um, associative crystal therapy as a way to help you deal with the root problem. And the root problem to many of our problems is often the way we think. And we're thinking the wrong things and we're manifesting negative things into our life. And so if we begin to think the right way, to begin to focus our thoughts on the things we want to develop on ourselves, in ourselves, we can do that. And uh, if you're using a crystal, such as this opal, if you wanna be more loving, if you wanna be more kind, right? If you wanna attract friends or a partner, Right? There's nothing wrong with that, being able to use it to focus that energy. Now, a lot of times it's difficult to hold abstract things in your head, and that's why sometimes it's hard to have willpower. It's an abstract thing. It's not a tangible thing. I can't put willpower in a box and let you borrow some of mine, right? Because it's an idea. But all of a sudden, when you work with a, a crystal that you associate with willpower, it's no longer untangible. It's no longer abstract. You are now holding willpower in your hands. You can feel it. You guys can see them, right? You can hold it in your hands. It's there. It's real. And therefore, you can hold these thoughts in your head. You can hold that idea of willpower. It strengthens it in your head. And the more you practice it, the more reps you do practicing having this willpower using the crystal, well, the better you'll become at it. And to the point where you may not even need the crystal at a certain point to bring those things out from yourself. And you'll notice that your brain makes connections eventually through all these different repetitions and reps that you do with practicing having that virtue, that trait that you want to possess. And you'll become completely different person. There's nothing wrong with using the crystals. Um, you don't have to believe in any sort of special energies. 
and any sort of magic or anything like that. If you do, it's helpful too, but it's not going to change anything if you don't. So that's kind of an introduction to associative crystal therapy. It's an introduction to my story on how I came to create it and how I began to use crystals in that way. Many of you wondered about uh, my interest in crystals. Well, that's part of the story. Now, I encourage you to become better people in this channel. I help you develop positive habits, positive habits of mind, so that you can become a better person, so that you can live towards your fullest potential. And I encourage you to do so. Work on yourself. Make yourself better so that you can be of use to your family, so that you can be of use to your community, and ultimately so that you can be of use to the rest of the world. Thank you guys for watching this video to the end, an introduction to associative crystal therapy, to learn how you can use stones and crystals to help you in your self-development process. If you've seen this to the end, please um, share this video. Um, if it's helped you, share this video, leave a comment or question, in the comment section and be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, my name is Edgar Ortega, handsome blind guy, and I'll see you or you'll see me in a future video.